G'day, guys. Um, people have been asking me in the past, what do you think our future looks like, Harry? And, you know, I, I thought about it at the time and I said, well, you know, it's going to get a hell of a lot more unhealthier. There's going to be much higher rates of disease in the population and stuff like that. And, you know, but at the end of the day, we, none of us have got like an image of what the future will look like in a society which embraces a very high kibble diet. So if we, at the moment, even the sad dieters are still consuming some animal products, some dairy, some meats, some seafood. It's not completely 100% kibble or very close to 100% kibble or, you know, like 80, 90% these very high levels. So, but there is, there is one place in the world where it has been like that for some time. Um, and, you know, it, I remember seeing an academic out of um, the, uh, out of New Zealand and he was talking about how bad things were. He had actually worked for the health world health organization. Um, but anyway, I'll just go through some of the material that I've got, um, what the future will look like in a highly processed food environment. Because that's what they, that, this is what people like, you know, our, those wealthy virtual signaling people uh, of the WEF, you know, what I, the, the organization that I'm talking about, um, with Klaus and many of his other friends like Gates and others, you know, these people, you know, Gates is buying up a whole lot of land to basically convert it into, you know, kibble. Um, so he can supply the fake um, animal food, kibble, processed food industry, you know, basically, you know, the processed food 2.0, that's, or sad diet 2.0, which is 100% plant-based. So what does that future look like? Well, there is an island called Nauru, where that's sort of happened to an extent. It's not 100% kibble. It's very close to it. Um, uh, but it's, it's one of those societies where due to um, mining activities on the island, it sort of transformed the economy of the island. No longer were the traditional sort of um, products able to be available. And so pretty much the island population converted to processed foods because it's easier to ship processed foods in the middle of the Pacific. Remember, these people are way far, far away, and it's very difficult to actually transport animal products and stuff like that. It's much easier to just transport processed food. And that's pretty much what has happened there with disastrous results. And some of this information is a bit old and all that. Things are probably worse now, um, but uh, let's just get into it. So this is uh, Diabetes um, Co. Um, UK. So it's a diabetes organisation in the UK. And the title is, I have seen so many funerals for such a small island, the astonishing story of Nauru, the tiny island nation with the world's highest rates of type 2 diabetes. And... As you can see, all that industrial stuff back there, that's all about phosphate mining. Okay. So the, these are the, this is where what happened to most of the island, and you'll understand. So It just goes on the brief history. I'm not. I'm not really going to cover all these these sort of things. But the key things um, that back in the '60s, you know, there was basically the Nauru Phosphate Corporation, 
So these traditional people were, you know, and their financial woes were improved. But the phosphate reserves were finite towards the end of the 20th century. They were running out. Um, but Nauru was left as an, as an environmental wasteland with no consistent sources of income. And on top of that, they also have given away their rights to fishing in their own exclusive economic zone to Chinese, Japanese, and Taiwanese fishing boats, so which have depleted their resources completely. So country is pretty much a basket case. Um, uh, the Australian government finances and and uh, to some extent and has used it for offshore processing of refugees. So, you know, it's a pretty abysmal state. Years of phosphate mining largely by foreign companies with colonial aspirations has destroyed a lot of the land. It's not even habitable for humans, let alone capable of growing food. So that's all gone. The ability to grow food is pretty much um, been eliminated. And so they sort of cover a bit about what's happened over there. The sudden change in Nauru's diets was largely inspired by necessity. In, in, in our case, it's been forced on us. Years of phosphate mining, largely by foreign companies with colonial aspirations, has destroyed all the land. It's not habitable for humans, let alone for growing. The only option then, partic particularly for, the, for a country that has faced dramatic economic collapse, is to import cheap processed food from trade allies like Australia and New Zealand. So pretty much they're a poor country and that's all they can afford. And she actually says, um, this is Eva, um, she's a diabetes care manager at the Public Health Centre. So many people are dying at an early age because of diabetes. And that's the reality, it's really bad. Um, there, that um, guy that worked for the World Health Organization, the um, grant from New Zealand, who's an academic, he's a low carb doctor now. He basically saw this sort of stuff and he was shocked um, at the time. The level of amputations, you know, due to diabetes, you know, a large, you know, this is pretty much it. So, on my first visit to Nauru in the 1990s, talk about back in the 1990s okay talk about 30 years ago the diabetes was rampant and they weren't um, and there weren't many facilities to um to cope says dr ruth an associate professor calgary as an associate professor at the university of sydney who helped coordinate um the ruse healthcare program. A large number of the people with diabetes were suffering from amputation and blindness. We know diabetes brings about blindness and amputations. They want to make us all sick, blind, amputated, and stuck in the pod um, uh, to virtual in this virtualized control system. That's the future. So how did Nauru get in this state um, medically? Before gaining independence and control, um, uh, and control of the phosphate, the Nauruans diet consisted mainly of fish, which is a high taurine diet as well. Fruit, that's seasonal. We know that. Um, coconuts, half of their intake of energy came from, or you know, half of their intake of of nutri of food pretty much came from coconut. Their diet was a very high saturated, and these people were healthy. They were healthy, trim and slim and all that. And root vegetables. And there was also pork as well. 
which they neglect to put in here because, you know, this is a typical sort of nonsense, um, you know, emphasising all the plants and the fish because vegetarianism and ignoring the animal foods. They did have, they, they still have chickens, eggs and pork um, because that's all you can have on the, these sort of islands. But, you know, and these people are physically active as well. And, uh, but since 1968, the average new ruin has become a lot richer. Um, that was so rich, in fact, that fewer people needed to work. That was in the era when there was, uh, like, you know, try these people were getting like payments from the government from the phosphate. Um, uh, it, rather than actually getting people to work and putting that money into a sovereign wealth fund that would actually cover them in the future, they just squandered it. Um, in that regard, so so by the end, and therefore took part in less exercise. Well, that's not the real reason. It's the the poor diet. Colonial trade links in the Rue had established led to the import of Western diet, basically processed diet. That's what we're talking about, processed food. But the Aboriginal Rue began to eat far more processed foods, pretty much. You know, when we look at, you know, the obesity sort of levels, I've already covered all this sort of stuff up here. Consequences, you know, we're talking about neurons that have been identified. This is by the International Diabetes Federation, 31%. Uh, individuals, 45% amongst individuals between 55 and 60, 64. So in that older age bracket, it's even higher. It's understandable, you know, more processed food over many years. It is a small island country with the highest prevalence of type 2 diabetes. 71% of the population is obese. So 71% of the population is, is obese. Then 97 of the men are overweight. That is only slightly lower than that of women. So women are even higher than 97. So it's nearly the whole population is overweight or obese, pretty much. As more and more money went to health, um, you know, less went to prevention, and this led to a cycle obviously because there was less interest in finding alternatives they could have pretty much brought in shitloads of egg um, chickens and had those chickens producing shitloads of eggs they could have had you know cemented down areas where they have pigs and stuff like that they could have had a very different diet and also not give away their fishing rights so they could have also fish and slowly with that money try and rebuild some of the soils, bring in soil from elsewhere to cover those areas and, and uh, you know, achieve some level of, you know, correcting some of the damage that was there so they could reuse that land. But this didn't happen, you know. Leading to a sharp increase in the consumption of processed foods, which is, you know, I mean, beyond burger, beyond this, beyond that, you know, this all these modern types of plant-based foods that are being earmarked to be pushed by the food industry to replace the animal foods will basically just turn the entire Western diet into a processed food diet. And that's that's the consequences you'll get from that. With um, healthy food depleted, from the island, obese rates continue to climb due to the cultural association of obesity with wealth. They do have that, you know, populations that were always, you know, a bit like, you know, when you've got people that were like this in the past, they value this nowadays. They consider this is you know, that you're actually getting more intake of energy. They don't realise that this is creating the health problems. They haven't made, you know, 
look, a lot of people in our Western societies don't realise that. They eat certain things, they think it's genetic, they think it's all this other nonsense that people keep on telling them. We all sort of were brainwashed, they're no different, you know, but they use these sort of excuses of sedentary lifestyle, what a load of bullshit. Uh, hard to work and physical exercise, that, that's nonsense. Really what it is is the food supply is abysmal. This is actually a supermarket that was actually opened up in the country recently, you know, so this is a, a sort of a, a new supermarket that was opened. And this just explains and shows exactly what's going on. Look at there, you can't see anything that, that is actually not even, not even a plant that's grown. That's how bad it is. So as you can see, it's chips, 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 and all that, and soft drinks, soft drinks, soft drinks, and soft drinks. It's water, wall sugar. Wall to wall sugar. <laughs> I mean, biscuits from Australia. Oops. Bear with me. I'm... As you can see, the population is very obese. You can see the population is very obese. You hardly, I can't see one person that they're either overweight or obese. One of the thing. It's quite clear. There was one person there that was actually lean, but he looked like he was part Chinese or whatever. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> there you go, you know. Flake, picnic, cherry ripe, dairy milk, Cadbury's. That's probably even produced in Tasmania. Cadbury's, we've got a Cadbury's factory down here. Yes, they were waiting eagerly for their kibble. And there's even the politicians turned up. And they're overweight. See there, rice. Canned fruit, snacks, toppings, sauce, <laughs> marinades, dressing. I mean, it's just wall-to-wall -wall processed food. You know, all these, and, the, and these are basically all canned stuff. So the ice cream there is called dairy. <laughs> God almighty. Oh, that's all they need. They need all, they get, they're getting all this garbage and health supplements are going to save them. Oh, God. That's the future, you know. Eat your kibble, take your supplements and get sicker and sicker. You can see just overweight. It's hard to find one person that's actually skinny, like their ancestors. Just overweight, overweight.
Yeah, what can one say? And, and but that's the future. That is basically that's basically the future for the you know for other for the rest of the world. When you get rid of animal foods, you destroy the land and you've got no ability to grow any real food. Pretty much that's what you end up with, kibble. Just now they're trying to enforce it onto us, you know, because they bullshit with us. Calories are calorie bullshit, you know. Depends how that piece of energy is actually chemically processed and what sort of um, effects it has on the endocrine system. I mean, we know for years we've known you can be a type 1 diabetic and you can eat shitloads of food, absolutely shitloads of food, put no weight on whatsoever. You need insulin, you know. So it's just that's just nonsense. Anybody that says that, you know. And so engaging the Randall cycle and actually blockading, um, you know, at the cell, the uptake of additional energy as a protective mechanism for the cell means that you pile up the the, the energy from seed oils and sh refined sugars in the bloodstream. You're going to be engaging the Randall cycle for many many hours for a very long time and people doing that on a daily base for years which pretty much means that they end up morbidly obese with severe diabetes with severe health problems with losing limbs and going blind you know it's just it's an awful situation that's the future for the rest of the world that's exactly what, you know, their assault on animal foods, that's where it leads. Now, this island is, you know, it's a consequence of bad policies on the island that actually led this island to this so-called hell, food hell on earth. You know, they're promoting it as a nirvana, the gates and people like that, but the reality is it's a hell on earth because that's the consequences of, of uh, basically going down that seed oils and refined sugars, high deuterium foods with very low nutrition. Oh yeah, you can take the supplement. What a load of nonsense. That's the future. So when people ask me, what does the future look like? I say, look at Nauru. You know, you don't have to go very far. Look at Nauru and you'll know exactly what the future looks like. Anyway, see you guys.